Good evening all and welcome to another video. Tonight it is Saturday night. It is uh, the Witchwood Goblins tasting night. Which beer are we doing? Well, if you can't tell by the t-shirt and the, uh, the desktop background on the old computer right there, then you're probably completely blissfully unaware that it is the tasting night for this one. It is Trooper. And Trooper is an clearly an Iron Maiden inspired beer brewed by Robinson's Brewery and it weighs in at 4.7% ABV. And Trooper, if you don't know, is a song that is kind of inspired by uh, the Charge of the Light Brigade. And there is a little bit of the story on the back of the bottle. It says, Onward, onward, rode the 600. The Charge of the Light Brigade, which inspired the Iron Maiden song, The Trooper, took place at the Battle of Balaclava in 1854, during the Crimean War, when 600 British cavalry courageously charged the massed Russian artillery. This gallant but foolhardy assault resulted in a massive loss of life and came about due to a misunderstanding of an order given by the commanding officer, Lord Raglan. Launched in 2013, Trooper is an award-winning premium British beer that has sold over 15 million pints worldwide. And I've had quite a few of them myself, I must admit. Uh, Iron Maiden vocalist Bruce Dickinson worked with Robinsons to develop a beer which has true depth of character. And Bruce Dickinson, as you all know, has insane levels of character. Um, he's beaten cancer. Legend. Um, malt flavours and citric notes from a unique blend of Bobek Goldings and Cascade Hops dominate this deep gold nail with a subtle hint of lemon. So there we are. There is a little bit about the beer and the band, if you've never listened to them, where have you been for the last God knows how many years? You really need to. Um, I have recently been, I say recently, over the last 10 years since he was born, been educating my son to the uh, the wonders that is Iron Maiden through all eras, um, from the Paul Diano eras to uh, Bruce Dickinson, Bruce Bailey, uh, Bruce Bailey, Blaze Bailey even, and back again. Um, you really need to listen to Iron Maiden. Even if you're not familiar with Iron Maiden, even if you're not a fan of Iron Maiden, you need to try the beer. Um, because I've tried it, like I say, many times over the years and thoroughly enjoyed every single pint. So, what is the Witchwood Goblins Tasty Night all about? Well, if you've not seen any of the videos before or you've never participated, the premise of the Tasty Night is to take one beer and turn it into two beers, one of which is warm, one of which is cold, and do a bit of a comparison and see which you prefer, you know. And I thoroughly enjoy that premise, you know. It's always a good idea to try beers at different temperatures and see the nuances, the subtleties that come out from uh, from the serving temperatures. Because let's be honest, you know, beer is it's an organic thing and sometimes it, it prefers being cold and sometimes it prefers being warm. And as individuals, we all have our own sort of penchant for things, you know. Sometimes we like our beers served a little bit colder because it tightens up the flavour. Sometimes we like it served a bit warmer because it opens everything up. And I thoroughly enjoy the, uh, the, the Witchwood Goblins tasting nights. And we're going to do another one right now. So it is Saturday the uh, 29th of August. It is the 29th, hang on. Yes, 29th of August. It is now just approaching quarter past seven. So let's crack on and see what we've got. So we're pouring in two distinct glasses. Unfortunately, I don't have any Trooper glassware. Uh, so we are going to pour the room temperature beer into the Hobgoblin etched glass. And we are going to pour the fridge cold Hob, uh, Hobgoblin, the fridge cold Trooper into the Hobgoblin Halloween glass, just so it's easy to distinguish between the two as we're drinking. And we're going to analyse five different pillars of the beer. You know, we're going to look at the appearance of the beer. We're going to test the aromas of the beer. We're going to try the body. Then we're going to assess the flavour and finally the finish. And we're going to get one winner, possibly. We, we, we have the potential for a draw. You know, it doesn't happen very often. Um, but it could potentially happen. So let's crack them open and see what we get. We have different lids on the beers as well. That's something cool to point out. And once I've poured this one, which is the room temperature beer, I'll tell you which album that is. So we're gonna pour, first of all, as said, into the etched glass. We have a golden beer.
with about a finger of off-white head and we have a crystal clear golden beer it looks good you know uh, apologies there's nothing white behind here so you can see the color uh, but through the light boxes i've got over here it, it's verging on sort of amber uh, it's not as dark as say like a ruby although it may look it here it's really not um it's crystal clear like i say amber colored just a finger of off white head and it looks amazing the bottle cap on this one is from one of my favorite iron maiden albums i mentioned it on the goblins group earlier um, it is from the blaze bailey era it is from the x factor i don't know if you're going to pick that up there anyway that is it awesome album um sign of the cross superb song if you've not listened to it you really should um and lord of the flies superb again and we are going to pour the fridge cold beer into the hobgoblin halloween glass and the port is going to be the same color let's be honest it's actually pouring a little bit better it feels nicer to pour as odd as that sounds we have less head quite clearly same color on the original pour, you know, okay, the head has increased slightly. It's slightly tighter head on the cold beer um, than it was the room temperature beer. You know, otherwise they're identical, you know. So the only way we're gonna be able to separate these two is on the head, you know, they look the same. They're crystal clear, they're golden, verging on amber. The head wins on the cold beer. So on appearance alone, the cold beer wins and just to go back to the cold beer the bottle cap on this one is no prayer for the dying uh which you're probably not going to pick that up very well there because autofocus is tracking my face and not the bottle cap there we go no prayer killer album so on appearance the cold one wins a slightly tighter more compact head so we're going to go for the aromas first we're going to go for the room temperature in the hobgoblin etched glass so malt clean sweet malt there is a hot presence it's a sweeter hop you know i mean it, it referred to sort of cascade which does add a little bit of a grapefruity edge to it uh, i'm not picking that up on the aroma uh, we had goldings as well which is a traditional bittering hop and bobek which i'm not overly familiar with i must be honest um The malt is prominent. There is a little bit of citrus. Not huge, but it's there. So on the aromas, they are probably about four out of 10, you know, in terms of strength on the warmer beer. I expect them to be muted on the colder beer. So let's find out and be sure. They are more, they are more muted. They are a little bit more subtle. It's a more balanced aroma when it's colder. You've still got that malt, you've still got that citrus, but they are closer together. You know, on the warmer beer, they stand out a little bit more uniquely, if that makes sense. So at one time you get a big malt hit. And then again, when you go back in for another sniff, you get more of that citrus. On this one, it is a balanced presentation of the aromas. You get a little bit of the malt, you get a little bit of the citrus. And bizarrely, you get a little bit more hot presence as well. yeah you do it's more balanced it's more well-rounded it is it is what it is you know the temperature does affect things and like i say sometimes it opens up the aromas and flavors sometimes it tightens them up it has tightened them up here but by doing so it's taken away those kind of excess you know and allowed the whole thing to just do its thing nicely it's it's one for the aroma on the cold beer. So we're one, one. So we have one apiece. The next test is the body. And again, with the cold, I tend to find it tightens everything up, brings it a little bit more kind of together, gives it a little bit more oomph, shall we say? Um, 
just to go back to the musical term, it's like taking a single coil pickup on a guitar and bringing in a humbucker. It just rounds it out and just just gives it a bit more beef. Um, I'm a guitar player myself and bass player. Um, more guitar than bass. I, uh, I've loved playing guitar for years. And my inspirations really were Jimi Hendrix and Eric Clapton. Um, but more recently, over the, I say more recently, in probably what the last 20 years, um, there has been a massive influence from, uh, from Moonface. And uh, if you're not familiar with Moonface, anyone who's an Iron Maiden fan will know who Moonface is. It's Dave Murray. Um, and his searing tones, they're so tight and so smooth uh, from his Stratocaster with uh, Seymour Duncan pickups in there, the old hot rails. It just works wonders. Anyway, I'm uh, waffling a little bit off tangent and... Uh, yeah, let's go back to the body of the beer. You know, I was referring to the whole pickups being sort of thin on the single coil, fatter and thicker, more rounded on the uh, the humbuckers. And I expect to have the same here. So on the warmer beer, the mouthfeel is soft. The body is medium. It, it just works. It's, it's medium. Yeah, medium levels of sort of velvety smooth as well. It's nice. It is spot on. And on the cold beer, the delivery is different. It's still smooth, it's still velvety, but it's it's a little bit slicker. It's like, imagine, a, I don't know, this is gonna sound really weird. In fact, no, let, let's go back to guitar terms. If you're playing guitar or bass and you've got old strings that are a little bit dry and then you've got fresh strings which are kind of slick and smooth that's the difference here the warmer beer is like those dry old strings where it's a little whilst it's still good you know there's something missing it's that that freshness and the cold beer has that it's just that little bit smoother of a delivery um so yeah the cold beer wins again two nil so we've got appearance and body in favour of the cold beer. Will we have the the, uh, the appearance and aroma? Appearance and aroma. Yeah. Appearance. Appearance to the cold beer. Aroma. I'll come back to it. I forgot where I was. Anyway, but the, uh, the body goes to the cold beer as well. So let's go for the flavour. We're going for the warm one first of all. Whilst it is a gold nail, it is still traditional in style. You've got Malt playing sort of the lead role, if you will. It's the front man of the beer. The hops are there. They're very much second fiddle though. And I get what they're saying from the bottle. You have got that citrus flavor. On the warm beer, malts are king. On the cold beer, Again, the malt is there, but again, it's more balanced. It's a little bit more well-rounded, a little bit more put together, if that makes sense. It's, it's interesting because yeah, I thought there was the cold beer almost has a little bit of an aniseed flavor. And that's not something that I am, uh, it's, it's not that drastic a difference I'm expecting between the two beers, you know. There is a warmth and a slight level of spice of sorts from the warmer beer. But as soon as you follow it up with the cold one, you get a hint of aniseed. That was unexpected. Now, A gold nail, I expect to be hoppier, slightly, uh, slightly more. What's the word I'm looking for? A 
I don't know. I don't know what the word is. But yeah, I expect it to be hoppier. I expect it to be a little bit just fresher tasting. And to get that level of spice, I was quite surprised. Um, I've, like I say, I've had it many times over the years, but I've never compared a warm one to a cold one before. And, you know, as a consequence, I've never seen that difference between the two. And that's what I notice it as. It's an amicey type edge. And I'm not sure. The warm one is more traditional. It's more as I expected to taste, just warmer. Whereas the cold one is, whilst it's more rounded, it has got that spicy edge that the cold perhaps is bringing out. Call that one. One is even. Because there's different things that I like, you know. There are flavours that are common to both. You've got that malt, they're both common. Hops are more prominent in the warm one. But that spiciness is coming through that was different and unexpected. And again, I've never detected that before when tasting it in previous times. It's just the comparisons bring it out. So on is even. And that brings us on to the uh, the final chapter, the end of the album, shall we say, the finish. Which one do I prefer? So we're gonna start with the warm one. Okay. It is sweet. There's no getting away from that. It's a sweeter beer. It's it's far more sweet than it is bitter. It's hanging around quite nicely. Yeah, there there is hop, there is malt, there's a little bit of everything on the finish on the warmer beer. I like it a lot. On the cold one. You've got, again, a bit of everything, but it's more muted. The finish is still sweet. You don't feel it going on quite so long as the warmer beer. And again, it's it's a win for the warm one. Let's be honest, you know, it's just more prominent on the warmer beer. You've got a little bit more of everything. And with a good beer, more of it is let's be honest, probably better than less of it. Um, unless, of course, we're talking about your sobriety levels. So it's always good to keep control to some degree. So we have a majority win for the cold one. For the cold, I don't know why I'm showing you the bottle. They're both the same. Um, we're going for the cold one. Here we go. We have a way of differentiating between the two. The head is better on the cold one. The aromas are different. Flavour, again, is different. Body, it is what it is. And the finish, you know, the finish props to the warmer one, you know, it, it's more prominent. And it's, yeah. It's a slight win for the colder one. It is what it is. Um, it's a gold nail. Again, those kind of beers I expect to uh, taste better cold. They're a bit more refreshing when they're cold. But at the end of the day, beer is what it is. Everyone else is unique. We all like them differently. So drink it how you want to drink it. Enjoy it how you want to. Which uh, leaves me at the point of the video where we say, down there are some buttons. You know exactly what to do with them by now. Let me know in the video comments below if you've tried trooper that one not the others because they do they do a few varieties of trooper they've got the uh, the black stout there was uh, various iterations you've got a lager which is the uh, sun and something um which i haven't tried because i'm not a big lager fan um, but yeah let me know in the comment section below if you've tried uh, trooper and uh, on that note i'm going to say that's been the beer i've been nick and i will see you again soon for another video bye